Hello, Brian, and we're Hello. back. And we're back, and it is so good to be back, Haley. It's you know, been there, a while. There are little, well, yeah, there are little things in your lives that that uh, center you, and you look forward to as part of what's normal, you know, for you. And this is really an important component of that. You know, it's uh, in the last few days we've learned about a couple of close friends dying, and uh, you know, it knocks the wind out of you because uh, they're gone. And, and uh, you start to think about the things that you do still have mm -hmm. and, that, and that mean a lot to you. So thank you for this experience. And I think, isn't that the whole point of the hero's journey is to be present and is to be thankful for what you have now? Yeah. And we it, need it, these things every now and then just to kind of be like, and come present and come present. Yeah. And we've had some rather big adventures oh over my the last God. month or so that have really forced presence. You, I, uh, you know, I had uh, spinal fusions, and uh, on my in my back, and I and I didn't know when I had it that it was the uh, second most painful surgery one could have on their body. <laughs> and that it took the longest to heal. Uh, but what happened to me, Haley, was that the, uh, the anesthesia and the pain meds that I had uh, and the pain itself took me to a different place. I was very, 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 very confused in terms of where I was mm -hmm. and um, what, what reality was and uh, I was so, I was sad. I cried. I was so tired because I often couldn't sleep. You know, one right. night I, I looked at the clock, it was three 30 and I was watching, um, America's got talent, you know, auditions. Cause they make me cry when, <laughs> when the audience cries and Simon cries and, you know, so, um, you know, I got through that, but it was it was tough and finally got to the point where I uh, knew reality from non. But uh, boy, does it make you think about your life and about what's important, uh, you know, cleaning, having everything neat. It's not important. Uh, entertaining not important. Even what you eat isn't all that important. Uh, but, you know, your primary importance is your relationship. At least that was for mm -hmm. me. Uh, and knowing that Ray, you know, he'd come in every uh, meal and feed me, you know, watermelon and other things by hand, you know, before I was able to, uh, you know, and I, you know, I don't want any food. I don't want any food. Uh, so, uh you think, boy, that was quite an experience of, and it, and it opened your eyes to all kinds of things, pain does, mm -hmm. in terms of what's important and who's important and who reached out to you. You know, uh, we have a guy, friends of ours, one guy comes every day so that I can sleep and break. And because Ray, you know, after, taking care of me for four weeks he went in to have uh, uh knee replaced and you know now i'm taking care of him and he went through the same thing that for the first three or four days the anesthesia and the pain meds right he was he was out of it you know i he i she'd say what day is it i'd say it's wednesday he said no it's sunday and there's nothing worse than having a partner who argues with you and <laughs> and is stubborn and out of it <laughs> because in their own you world don't, you don't know whether to argue and or just walk out of the room and realize <laughs> you know it doesn't matter if he thinks it's sunday yeah really it doesn't matter until he's out it of that crowd. really doesn't matter so he came out of his uh um confusion uh which is again i think the anesthesia wearing off and and uh, 
the ability to take care of each other. You know, I wasn't really up. I wasn't ready. I was, you know, still hurting. So to be the one who was running around, you know, making meals and washing dishes and doing the laundry and getting, you know, his pills ready for the next day. I went to bed every night feeling like I had run a marathon. Imagine. And, and I too, and I was thinking, um, you know, well, who's going to take care of me? No, I'm not healed yet. <laughs> it's, uh... he, you know, one of the great things too, about this experience of both of us uh, going through these uh, reality challenging um, and pain uh, confronting experiences. One of the great things for us is that every night, no matter what happened during the day, we would sit and talk to each other about what we were feeling. You know, we never, ever, ever went to bed with questions left unanswered. You know, like I can see on your face, this is hard for you to do. Talk to me about that. Or I can see it, you know, I can feel from you this. Is that right? Tell me about it. And um, and to have that and a sense of humor, you know, you know, sense of humor is so important. I think in life, a sense of humor is what gets us through it. And it's sort of that choice of like, are you going to enjoy this experience? Or are you going to get stuck in the mud with how difficult it is? And the sense of humor it easily brings you into, right, I'm just going to try and enjoy the best I can. Yeah. What, You're what talking you about you and Ray and sort of the experience that you two have gone through over the last six weeks or so. Which I think one person going through surgery is a lot, but having one person go through surgery and then another person go through surgery in the same household. What makes you and Ray so good at this? Is it because you guys have worked on the relationship? Or is it because you guys have this soul connection that makes communication safe? Uh, uh, great question. One, uh, we love each other dearly. You know, uh, um, that that love is really what holds you together um, and that the appreciation of the other person. Now, we have different styles. You know, it's not like everything is a smooth road. Uh, you know, we have very different personalities and um, and approaches to solving problems. But we have learned to do it together, you know, especially mm -hmm. as we've aged that we're not in competition with each other. You know, when you're younger, especially maybe if it's, you're just guys, you know, there's this, even when your husbands, there's this competition, you know, of who's gonna be in charge, you know, who's gonna have the final say. And um, you, I, you let go of that and it's just an amazing, and I think that is one of the hero's journey, Haley, is, uh, confronting your ego and letting go mm -hmm. i do i you know i wish we somebody had tutored me when i was little about this but uh w one of the things you, i realize is that um my ego is necessary but it holds me back if it's too important if things are too important the and word i would use for that is vulnerability that if it, that I'm more vulnerable. Yeah, and also sort of that hero's journey of realizing you need your ego, but allowing yeah, yeah. the, like, training the ego to yeah. let go of sort of the fight and choose the sense that, of humor, choose the joy. It, it's absolutely, and it's, uh, Haley, it's every minute of the day. Mm -hmm. It's whether you whether you argue with the butcher at Fresh Market, which I did this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had an experience yesterday. That's so funny. Well, what's funny is that they sent a flyer, you know, through the mail saying today's special uh, is, at the at the butcher is a beef pot pie. So I went in specifically, <laughs> and uh, we don't have that product. And I said, wait, I said, wait. It says fresh market. It says beef pot pie. Why wouldn't you have it? You know, we who don't has have it. <laughs> who has your beef pot pie? Yeah. Well, you know what I did when I got home is I wrote to fresh market 
and said, what's going on? You sent me this notice. And I went and, and, and the guy happens to be very grumpy. <laughs> the butcher. But, uh, but it's, but it's true. Uh, you, you make a decision every moment of the day. Uh, how important is this? Mm -hmm. you know, is it, is it really important? I mean, I had on my mind getting back home so I could be with Haley. So I was constantly watching my watch and, you know, thinking, should I, well, should I go to another fresh market? No, we're going to go back, <laughs> going to go back and be with Haley. Go hunt uh, for the, the pie. Yeah. So when we're talking about vulnerability and sort of the work it is to constantly, every single moment, choose the joy versus the fight. Yeah. You're 76 now. I'm 76. 76. I'm 45. And yeah. we've both had experience for a number of years on this hero's journey. I think, you know, I can unequivocally say, regardless of how, met, how much time I've been on this journey, it still requires every single moment choosing joy. Yes, it does. Because otherwise, uh, you can beat yourself to, into a pulp. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, of guilt tripping yourself or seeing yourself as a failure, um, choosing to fight about stuff that's unimportant, uh, you know, even in terms of who cut who off in traffic, you know, it's what's, what is important, uh, you know, in the U S not so much to Mexico, you know, we're in crazy land right now with the election, you know, pe people aren't talking to siblings or to friends when they find out that they wear a red hat you know it's just how can you be so stupid why don't don't call me stupid and so you have to learn <laughs> you have to learn how to uh you know tread through what can be a minefield and realize that you don't have to walk through the minefield you can I, step back and walk yeah. around it you can walk around it and i think we're going to have that conversation because obviously it is election year. So we are going to have the conversation about politics. Yeah. But I want to sort of kind of go back to choosing joy in every moment and sort of that vulnerability, which we're sort of using the word vulnerability today. To I like that. that sort of training the ego to let go of the fight, surrendering into joy. Uh huh. We choose it every single moment, which we're agreeing, like regardless of how much time you've been on this path you still choose it just as much as a beginner has to choose it. Yes. But one of the things that can really is sort of a paradox can really jeopardize that choosing is pain. But oh, pain can also the, the tool, the, the like to pull you out of pain is the presence. So it's like, it's a very interesting paradox, this pain thing. So pain? can you Dude, share true. a bit of, your experience with the pain, because you did mention the surgery was or is sort of one of the most, or if not the most painful surgery a person can undergo in their lifetime. Can you share a bit about your journey with pain and coming to the point where you're like, I'm more present or I know what's important now? Yeah, I'm in pain right now. You know, I'm in, um, I'm in, a, uh, I feel pain. But, I, but in moments like this, I choose to ignore it. Now, early on, uh, after maybe the second or third week, uh, it was easier for me to uh, control my attention to the pain. You know, how much attention are you going to give it? Uh, but in the beginning, it was, this hurts, this hurts. Why is that hurting? That has nothing to do with what they did. You know, I had, I was thinking... <laughs> I shouldn't be feeling this pain. <laughs> and then also, <laughs> Haley, you went through, why did I do this? Why did I have the surgery? You know, did I really need this? But why let's be clear about the pain that you're talking about. This isn't a pain like you take one ibuprofen or an Advil and you're fine. This no. is the kind of pain where moving takes your breath away. Yeah, it's always there. The pain is always there. Um, but what's exciting is that uh, w right after the surgery, I felt like I was a really, really old man. You know, when I was in this bed here, Ray and I have changed beds. This is this guest room bedroom that you've seen in your life. 
uh, it became the hospital ward, you know, so for four weeks, I was in this bed and, uh, you know, with the raised toilet and the, uh, the toilet and the chair and the shower to sit in and, you know, wash with the, the hose. Uh, I felt, Haley, I felt so old. I, I, I did. I, I thought, my goodness, I'm and and there was a disassociation of everything around me. You know, uh, the dog's not here. The dog's bored at four right. months. Uh, and I get to, I, I'm driving, which is great. So I drive, I get to see him. Ray doesn't because he's can't get knocked Ooh. over. You know, and I imagine why, with stability. That's why the dog's in Florida. Yeah, he can't be knocked over. So um, uh, none of that and initially I was... I could relate to, I could look outside and you know how beautiful our garden is. It's so peaceful. It's a Zen garden. And I'd look at it and I wouldn't feel much. You know, I, what I was doing was trying to make sure I could get to the bathroom, right? Could I get to the TV table and watch some TV with dinner? Um, could I get back then into bed? And, and then, uh, and I have the same pain in terms of my legs and my back now but i'm it i'm not it's not in charge of me you know i'm i take meds but they, they don't really take you know meds don't really eliminate the pain uh, they touch this or that mm -hmm. they might calm mm -hmm. you down you know they uh, numb it but they don't eliminate it <laughs> yeah and they numb and they can numb your nerves like diazepam you know can you can take just so you can sleep uh um so and i'm able to sleep now which is great but going back to the pain thing um yeah. the, the the pain separates you from the people um around you for a while like when i go into uh fresh market or Publix or wherever i'm in a i'm in a a, a, a belt a, you know a, a a back brace and it separates me from other people uh, yeah, in terms of there's no visible sign in any of them that they're dealing with anything. Mm -hmm. And so some of them I'll watch, you know, speed with their cart and just miss you. And I think, where are you going in such a hurry? You know, what is it? You know, they grab their pizza and their sushi and run to the front counter as if, you know, the world was ending. And, uh, so pain can separate you, but it can also be an incentive from, from my perspective, it can be an incentive to keep working, to get back into the swing of things, to get back into being the Brian you were prior to the surgery. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not, my body's not going to be the same ever, but that doesn't mean I, It'll I'm not. Better. Yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might not feel the the uh, sciatica anymore. I might, you know, but I can't bend anymore, uh, Haley. Mm -hmm. I can't bend down. Right. So, you have those know, rods now. You have like physical structures. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I used to hear about Ray telling about how many rods and screws he had in his back. And I thought, oh, my God, you know, you sound like an erector man, you know. <laughs> Now I've got the same number of rods and screws in me. So I'm going to have to go, if I go to an airport, I'm going to have to go through a special check, you know, because I can't just walk through. Same thing with, a, I can't have a CAT scan anymore. Um, I can't have an MRI anymore. Or maybe I can have a CAT scan, but I can't have an MRI anymore. Uh, because they'll ask you, do you have any, you know, metal in your body? Yes. Sorry. You know, go to x-ray. Um so this is a new life, but that what's fascinating for me, and it's worth it, actually hear me say this, that, you know, despite all the pain, uh, uh, the confusion, the pain, it's worth it because I, it's making me think about stuff uh, in, a, in a more focused way. Uh, and as you said earlier, making the hero's journey, it's about embracing vulnerability. It is. Uh, it is because you're not, and also being 76, I'm not, 
I'm not the, the king on the mountain anymore, you know. You mentioned, I, go ahead, honey. Uh, go ahead. When you were like coming out and like sort of home in your hospital room, at, that's at home, this room, yeah. that like yeah. felt so old. Does that old mean or does it signify that you felt helpless? Well, I'll tell you, I think you know the story, maybe you don't, but the first night after my surgery, you know, when I'm starting to come out of the, um, the days, uh, I'm realizing, and it's, it's at night, that I'm laying in ice water in the hospital room, that I'm soaked, the bed's soaked, my little, you know, jammy thing is soaked, everything, I'm freezing. And so, you know, I call the, um, the, the nurse, you know, with your little buzzer and there's no response. And they're right across outside my room that is where the nurse's station is. So I wait a minute, you know, wait a couple of minutes because they don't want to be a nuisance because, you know, I'm, you know, Mr. Rogers. So I w wait a few minutes and then push again. And I hear this voice saying, I'm your nurse. What do you want? And I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> But Ray had warned me night nurses, you know, can be the worst. So uh, she came in and I told her, you know, what's going on. I said, tell me, tell me something. Would you allow your grandfather to lay in ice water after his surgery? Well, let me get you. Let me, let me, you know, let's just take care of this. Let's get this dry. So, you know, she got me dry, which, you know, made me very happy. But she put another ice pack ben beneath me. And two hours later, I was you know, again, because they melt, you know, I said, these, you got to put these in a plastic bag. Well, they don't do that. And I said, well, let's not do another one. <laughs> so at any rate, th that first experience, that first night of having no power uh, and being totally, totally at the mercy of people who don't know you and don't much care. The, the other nurse said, somebody said, well, so-and-so says they're in pain. The other nurse said, everybody's in pain tonight. Well, that's your job, you know. You know, take, uh, that and, and you're, you're stuck, you know. And I think it's, I mean, that's a whole nother topic that probably belongs in, you know, politics is sort of the medical care system that is in the U.S. It is not care. It's a yeah. business. It's a business. And you are like literally a car that's coming to a service station and it's wait your turn, we'll get to you when we can and you got to go because another car's behind you. Yeah, yeah. But if you have good insurance, you'll get, we'll get to you faster. Yeah. You know, that's the bad part too, is that at uh, any rate, so the experience of, of being um, out of control where I couldn't change the bed myself, I couldn't move, Right. Yeah. All I could do is push a button and hope somebody would respond. It starts you thinking about your life in a different way, you know, uh, in, 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 in an old world, Brian McNaught. Oh, my God, he's coming to speak. Oh, my God. Have you now it's he's a body. He's a carcass in the bed with the ice water. And that's and that's at this moment in your life who you are. Did you and have so, tantrums? Where you cursed out everything you knew and was just like, how is this even possible? How am I supposed to be sort of the best person you know, I can when I'm know, in this situation? For the, for, for the first time that I can remember, I did throw, a, I, I, this may not, this um, may not mean, you, I don't know if you saw the movie Terms of Endearment where Shirley MacLaine's daughter is in the hospital and she's not getting what she needs. And if Shirley MacLaine, pulls a nutty and the, you know, with the nurses, you know, screaming at them. Um, well, I, I said to the nurses, the, the, the chief one, I said, uh, you, you know, you didn't come in once to introduce yourself. Well, I didn't want to wake you. I said, I, I haven't slept all night long. I said, and you watched your associate here come in, turn my, the, the light on every four hours uh, to check my temperature you know, why do they do that? Turn on the fluorescent lights every four hours. To I don't know why there are fluorescent lights in a hospital. <laughs> I don't I don't know either. Click, boom. You know. Yeah. So I said. It's not a place of healing whatsoever. And, and once I said, I'm going to talk to Dr. Ritter tomorrow, everything changed, you know, suddenly 
oh my God, what can I do for you? You know, I'm your friend. Da, 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 da. And I'm the, I, you know, Haley, you know me. I forgive immediately then. Once it's said, once it's put out there, once there's an apology, I let it go. And, 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 and the hospital keeps sending me um, uh, evaluations and I won't fill them out. I keep, because if I fill them out, I'll, I'll say all this stuff and I don't want anyone to get in trouble you know, <laughs> because I feel like, okay, we've had our conversation. You know, it's I don't fun. get fired. I don't know what your home life is. I don't know what happened to you that morning before you came to work. Um, so, but it did shake me up. Uh, and uh, on this an experience of disassociative experience, you know, of who am I in the world and who are my friends and, you know, what is this house and, you know, um, but good came from it. You know, I would just, that's the final, you know, the end message I want to say is that good comes from it daily because I keep getting better mm -hmm. and, and I keep thinking clearer and I and I think about things that I didn't take the time to think about in the past. I was more concerned about, you know, reupholstering the chair that the dog had chewed through than I was, you know, this whole question of our relationship and, you know, what does it matter? What what does it matter? You know, this other stuff. What matters is, are you safe? All I care about with, you know, my day is around Ray. It's totally around Ray right now. Now, when he's self-sufficient, you know, I won't need to be just like his day was totally me mm -hmm. you know, for, four, for four weeks. I was his, it was, that's, I was all day morning to night. I was all he thought about in terms of, and the dog, the dog was a big, you know, had to be taken out and exercised and played with, but between the two of us, he was exhausted. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm glad I don't have to deal with the dog uh, because it's too much. Yeah. But going back to your question, what, how did we get through this? What made the difference? Um, it, it's, it's love, it's commitment. And we're both, we're both good boys from big Catholic families who grew up uh, with good um, messages about caretaking and, that actually is a wonderful segue into caretaking and care providing. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> because I think, you know, in your experience, your and Ray's experience, you've kind of both had the role of a caretaker and a care provider. Yep. And, you know, from a vulnerability side, you have to receive that care. That's exactly right. Ray and I have had that conversation. When somebody offers you help, you know, uh, you accept it. You accept because it. It's because it's their gift to you. And, the, you know, there is that equal exchange, especially in the situation. Like once you received the care, then you turned around and became the care provider. Yes. And yeah. And, and in the, and it, what's cool, Haley, is that in the process of providing care, I became stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, I became more focused. I became more confident. Uh, and, and that's, and that's really important when you're healing, you know, because your body says, stop what you're doing and get in bed, lie down. You need yeah. to stop. But you, you, well, you say, well, later, you know, maybe I'll get a nap in, but what's really important now is does he have coffee? Does he have water? Are the shades closed in his room? Is the sound machine on for him to sleep? You know, da, 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 da. And, and. And I'm glad think, for that. It's not going to last forever. It doesn't last forever, but I think the vital or the critical question that you're asking is what is important and doing what's important. I feel like we always have energy to do what is important, even yes. if we're in pain, even if we're exhausted. If we can just say, this is important to me, so I'm doing it, we can do it. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. I I, I totally agree with you. And, and one of the things that... Uh, uh, has happened to me in this process is, you know, people um, offer to help in different ways. You know, they all have their own idea of what help you need. 
um, and uh, what help you want. Uh, and it's hard to tell them exactly, you know, because you don't want to be needy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, well, you don't want to be helpless and you don't want to come across as sort of this fragile, helpless person. Right, right, right. Uh, so um, a couple people, uh, you know, just really shined. I mean, it's just and un people I didn't expect would do that, shined. Um, and then, you know, you have some people who um, don't shine as much as uh, <laughs> they don't. You know, you you, you thought they might, but that's fine. That's who they are. That's that's fine. That's you're not making, our arena. You're making it through, you know, even yeah. without that beef pot pie <laughs> at Fresh Park. I that's can survive. So, I can survive no beef pot pie. <laughs> just to throw in the humor here, it's interesting that you have a beef pot pie situation today. Yeah. Yesterday I had a fillet situation. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. And we one of the things that has drastically changed about my life being in Mexico is that we eat fresh every day. So mm -hmm. vegetables are like we buy the fruit, the vegetables, the meat that day. Um, so we have we went to the butchery and I was like, can I have filet? And he was like, absolutely. And I'm like, are you sure this is filet? And I'm like, because it looks like a sirloin to me. And he's like, nope, this is filet. I'm like, fine cook it and I'm like this has gristle on it filet should not have gristle mm -hmm. and it was one of those moments where I'm eating it and I'm just like this is not my filet <laughs> <laughs> and how and then you have to decide how important is it and exactly it's just like all right am I going to be a grouch over a piece of meat right that regardless of how tough or how soft it is still going to nourish my body <laughs> and am I going to and there tomorrow and tell I'm, I'm sitting across from this other human that I could really enjoy his time and our time together but I'm letting this fight about my filet yes, yes. a girl just wants a filet yes right I and I think it. it's that that vulnerability of being you know like what is important and giving up the fight because I think so many of the teachers that have come before us say like 99% of the fights that we're in aren't worth it. They aren't. What, you know, what, what are the fights that are worth it? Right. The, you know, for me, the fights that are worth it are um, things that help other people that's worth fighting for, right. Feeding somebody, uh, you know, helping take care of them, uh, fighting fighting for a principle is important um uh fighting to end slavery was important right and i think just fighting for presence uh-huh that, that's it, right <clears throat> like while you're eating that yeah this, or you're in that kind of pain and you just want to have a tantrum and being like what's the point of all of this right you right. have and that's the one percent where you fight for your presence and you, if for your presence, right? You look over at the dude, and he's looking at you, kind of. Is she all right? I, this, <laughs> like, this is high maintenance. Is, how important is this going to be to her? Do <laughs> I say something, or do I leave it alone? Right. <laughs> it's a, uh, you Aren't know, these it's carrots good. <laughs> good. <laughs> it was a very interesting moment, but I think, you know we go through these life experiences and I found sort of my message with my clients over the last two weeks, the message has been really important in terms of, or really loud and vibrant in terms of your life matters. You're here for a reason. And I feel like that's what we have to fight for. We have to fight to a have the presence of how important our life is. Uh-huh. And yes, there are these moments where we are forced to be vulnerable and to accept that we will be okay, even if we're vulnerable, regardless of how nasty the experience is. It's tough. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting the journey or you're 70 years into it. There are still these tough moments where you have to make that decision. Is my life important? Every day? Uh, Every day. Haley, you know, I 
I got to the, you know, I lived for many years with the feeling that my life was important because people told me how it positively it impacted them. And that was a great feeling. Uh, laying, so here's, here, here, here's really the cosmic situation. I sent my, my manuscript in a year ago. And, and I, it's been there a year and they haven't started it, copy editing it yet. And when I looked up, uh, what is the normal time between uh, submission and publishing? Uh, eight months was the max. And, and, and it's been um, almost 12 months and they haven't started. So, uh, so I'm feeling really helpless about that because, you know, I can throw a hissy fit and which I, you know, learned long time ago how to do, you know, you just keep dripping water on them until they finally say, stop, stop. All right. All right. Uh, uh, or you can just let go and say, look, it's going to get published. Uh, you just got to wait, but it's not happening the way you thought it was going to happen. And there, you're missing opportunities by it not coming out, right? When you think it should be. And, and that's happening and you're in this ice water and, uh, and you're not in charge of that either in terms of uh, how quickly are they going to get you out of this situation? Um, I'll tell you, you know, on the, I, I had surgery, Haley, on, on Monday, and then they said I needed to have another surgery on Wednesday. So, you know, I had double the amount of anesthesia in me on pills. So on Thursday, they, you know, said, well, you'll be here for a couple more days. I said, no, I, I, I will not be. <laughs> I said, I'm leaving today. They said, no, 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 no. You don't leave. You can't leave today. We either you know, there's processes. And so, so I asked to see the doctor and I said to the doctor, uh, do you have a father my age? And he said, yes. And I said, if your father told you that he's not getting any sleep and he's feeling really sick and he needs to go home and get some sleep and not have a light turned on every four hours to wake him up, would you tell your father that he could not go home? He said, all right. <laughs> now that shocked everyone because no one thought, you know, because he's a tough nut. No one thought that he would let me go home, but I wasn't going to stay. You know, I just wasn't going to stay. I had to take some control mm -hmm. over what was. And at some point, you know, we do. It's a, you know, I came back and, and contacted Fresh Market, and, you know, just said, what's the deal when you advertise a special and then they don't even know the product in the store. I mean, you, you know, you at some point may have a casual conversation with the guy in the <laughs> butcher shop how to say. Or you might you just want to communicate that there is, we're going to have this campaign. Let's make sure we have it in stock. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah, it, yeah. Or say to the butcher, look, if your, your food is delicious, but I didn't get the other night what I hoped I was going to get. And can you just show me what a fillet looks like to you? Because it, I, I, and let me point out to you what a fillet looks like to me, and see <laughs> if, if they're close. You and know, it can be done with, can be done with humor. Think, you know, in being able to look at the U.S. and sort of the conundrum that is the U.S. right now, and the difficulty in communicating and the difficulty in speaking. I have again found that the easiest way to have conversations or to start conversations or to continue a conversation where something has come up is to define. Define. When you're saying that, what do you mean? Oh, okay. And I, like, I, now you're, you're, this is a hysterical because I know you do not like to talk politics <laughs> and I can't believe you brought it up. I thought, oh, she's never going to talk about You know, I think it's such an interesting subject for me because I was looking back and of what I did the last elections, because it's been like four years since I've been in Mexico. The last time was 2020 and there was the George Floyd thing and then there were elections and there was a lot of election sort of stress. And 
I back then I had offered to do what I could to alleviate the stress and just sort of be like, it's tough times, but you still have some control. Let's find the control. And, you know, with this election coming up, I feel like the stakes have been raised even higher in terms of the stress that Americans are feeling. Um, I know that it extends beyond the U.S., but I think the people in the U.S., that's where like point zero is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, last elections when it was Trump and Biden and there was this divide where we for the for really for the first time saw people not talking to each other or cutting each other off because of who they were voting for. It was sort of a, oh, that's happening to other people or look what these people are doing. I feel like these elections, we're seeing that it's not just those people. It's everybody is embroiled in this. So I have been seeing more and more sort of over the last two years that division popping up in my close relationships and in me having to really confront it. I'm using it because it is a big it. Mm -hmm. It's very tangled. It's a very complex topic and conversation. So, you know, for me to sit back and be like, all right, I have to somehow get involved in this. How am I going to get involved in a way that's safe for me? And it is in being present. It is in not being the contradiction and trying to be as honest and true to my soul that my conversations are more about, can we clarify the words we're using, please? If you're using this word, what does it mean to you? And this is the way I'm using it. All right, now we can bridge by just not using those labels and actually talk about how we're feeling. That so far has changed my conversations. And we've been able to maintain relationships. Haley, uh, has your relationship uh, uh, with the dude, has that impacted at all uh, uh, your whole thinking about politics at all? Is he American? Yeah. Or is he- no, yeah. he's Mexican. So okay. it very much affected. It has affected me night and day, absolutely, yeah. because I am learning from him the kindness of love and sort of a, a kind love, if that makes sense. Because before my idea, my experience of love was very harsh and boundaries were harsh and crucial, very steel-like boundaries. And with him, it's been this sort of softening of you mm. can be vulnerable and still be taken care of. You like, you know, I mentioned that we're moving and I had a freak out because I'm so used to doing things on my own. And I go into a zone when I move, especially now that there's more than two suitcases that I just get it done. And I know that when I've moved, that's when I'll breathe. That's when I'll put the pieces together. I just go into autopilot. And he was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I have to move. And he's like, not you have to move. We are moving and I am here to help. And I was like, oh, Oh my God. It was almost like God was speaking to me, like chill out, girl. Were you able to hear it? I heard it. And I was just like, and we sat down and we made a plan. And so has it changed me? Absolutely. Because now I'm open to loving kindness. That's great. So that also sort of impacts the way that I'm in the world because I come from a place where I am the warrior, I am the activist. And in Mexico, there's far more presence. It's more about like, well, how can you be trying to fix that over here when you have to do this here? So it's been sort of, you know, in talking with one of my friends, we call it the privilege of being white. (laughs) Thinking you can change the world is the privilege of being white. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, it's just like, the world will come when I figured out my world immediately. And I think that's been a wonderful sort of come back to presence, sort your community out first before you're trying to change the entire world. But also it's helped too, because I can meet that harshness now with a sense of kindness, with a sense of calmness. So when, when you say I can meet the harshness, you're talking about somebody who is engaging you about the American election. 
And uh, you often don't, I mean, last time, last year or, or last uh, four years ago, we were talking, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we've been doing this for a while and uh, you would not say who you supported. And oh, it drove still, your, I don't support either one. <laughs> it, and it would drive your friends crazy that you would not because they felt so passionately about mm-hmm. one over the other. And uh, and so you're saying now that you, we need, we need another conversation. <laughs> I'm saying now that I can have the, it's, you know, in terms of politics, it's not just about the person you're voting for. It's about the policies. What is, and tell me what you mean by that, if you would. If you're looking to vote for somebody, let me change the language. If I am looking to vote with somebody, I am going to educate myself on their policies and where they're seeing their world. And then I'm going to take a step back and say, does that agree with me? Okay. If I find that a lot of what was happening Four years ago, people were not educated about policies. They were just looking at the person. And I feel like we're being, we've shifted a little bit where people are now actually paying attention to policies or what is the person about? It's not just about two people in a ballot. It's about what do they actually do once they're in office? Mm -hmm. And who are they as people? So I think the conversation is starting to change. The education level is starting to change in terms of people broadening their idea of what an election is. Mm -hmm. In that conversation, in terms of, all right, now we're not just going to focus on two people. We're actually going to start talking about policies and how they actually impact one person. I have found the way to navigate those discussions by defining defining terms. Mm -hmm. So for an example, if I'm talking to my friend and she's saying like, oh, we don't want Trump because he wants to build a war about immigration. It's what is your idea of immigration and your idea of building a war? What does that mean to you? And then it's, all right, this is what it means to me. Now we can have a conversation about just us two and what's important to us two. And we typically find that we're somewhat on the same page in terms of this is what I'm talking about, but we're calling it different things. Uh So that's where I'm at with it in terms of, you know, the grander speaking about politics. Part of my learning over the four years is I come to, what are the words? I am learning to accept that my vulnerability still equals I'm safe. Your vulnerabilities still mean I'm safe. Mm-hmm. So, so what pr- your priority is to to stay safe? Is that right? And it's yeah, it's because you know a lot of times when we're speaking about vulnerability and even how we started the conversation today, that shapes yeah. our core desire for safety. Am I safe? Uh huh. And, you know, part of managing the ego and being able to accept vulnerability is being able to accept that we're still safe. Well, it depends for me, uh, Haley, it depends upon uh, what we mean by safe, right? Absolutely. So I can feel safe in a conversation with you, right? But I can also feel unsafe, uh, walking down a street uh, in an area that I think I'm not going to, I'm physically unsafe here, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, um, I'm safe. uh, I'm safe in having conversations with people if I, uh, because I I have, I know how to limit damage in the conversation, right? I know how to keep it into an area where we're both feeling safe because mm-hmm. I don't there's I don't get anything out of making you, you feel unsafe if I love you right uh, if I know something rattles you 
like uh you know uh, we if you and i were siblings uh, and i knew exactly what your buttons were right in terms of family stories um if i loved you i'm not going to go anywhere near those uh uh if you make me crazy i'm going to push those buttons right <laughs> and then then you don't feel safe with me and you don't want to have a conversation with me and you don't really want to have me emailing you. I mean, I, I ended up blocking a nephew um, who uh, is, will say stuff that's just mean. And uh, like, well, we, we love Uncle Ray more than we love you. And that was because of my politics and his politics. And I thought, okay, you know what? I don't need to hear this anymore. Right. I, I don't. So I'm <laughs> going to I'm going to eliminate the the means that you have of saying those things. And in doing and so, you're, you. yeah. And in doing so, you're taking control of your safety. And then I feel safe. Yeah. Right. So, so I think in, in that in that in that one area, you, mm -hmm. know, you, you don't feel as safe as you once did going into that butcher shop you don't feel as safe you're going to get what you asked for right, right? i have to deal with you know it is my responsibility to create my safe world yes and and choose not to go in there again exactly and, <laughs> right, if we, right. If my definition of a fillet is different from your definition of a fillet and you only have your definition why am i going to keep coming in and asking for my definition because you're going to get yourself upset each time you do it. And, and be, you're going to get upset when you walk in, you're going to get upset when you walk out. You're going and to get upset. You know, you this can, goes back to what we were talking about earlier and sort of the key learning about vulnerability is that you learn to give up the fight. You get, you learn to give up the things you cannot control. Yeah. It's just like the fight and, is not worth you, it. But you learn to, you learn to take over the things that, you need to be in charge of in order for you to feel safe safe i'm not talking you know you know clearly we're talking about um uh locking a gate you know uh, uh blocking a call well and these are all things that keep us safe whether it's emotionally mentally or physically that's it's, right you know, safety is the same thing so right. You know, conscious of time, and I know that we're going to have far more conversations about this as we get closer to November and January afterwards, too. But sort of, I have grown in my ability, and thank you to the wonderful people that are in my life that support me in that growth. I have grown in my ability to feel safe in expanding my vulnerability and to be able to say that, like, all right. I can maybe participate in these conversations, but I can do it in a way that makes me feel safe. I'm still not going to have the conversations where we, our definitions are completely separate and we're not going to even give each other the chance to agree that we have different definitions of the same word. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go there because we're not safe. So I think it's yeah. you know, what has changed. It has really been over the last four years having these wonderful experiences of loving kindness that one can be safe in vulnerability and you and Ray continually show each other that every single day. Yep. And, and, and even if it's a hard day, even if it's a day of, I am so tired, I, I am, do not want to do what I'm doing, but I'll do it. Even in those days at the end of the day, we take the time to talk to each other uh, about okay how was this day mm -hmm. you know I'm, I don't feel great about the faces that I put on because um, I want you to f know that I'm 100% here for here for you yeah. that, that you're my job and I love it so um, I, I get tired you know um, I get overwhelmed uh, but I, I never want you to feel that you're a burden to me yeah, all that year, I'm not appreciating. It's it's wonderful. And I think, you know, the wonderful lesson of vulnerability and, you know, possibly more conversations for later is 
you know, these wonderful souls that come into our lives, whether they're friends, whether they're partners, yeah. whether they're dogs that yeah. teach us or give us the space to experience that loving kindness so that we can be vulnerable and can have moments of a complete tantrum, but then being able to be like, no, 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 I choose my presence. I choose my safety. I can create my safety. Will you promise me that we'll talk about uh, your your experience of loving kindness from your dude? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful, a wonderful lesson to share. Um, I, I, yeah, I and I I really want to hear it. Um, yeah, because you know I love you and I know something about uh, your journey to this point, and I'm, I really really want to know about how. Uh, your time with him, uh, your relationship with him has impacted you. Absolutely. Because, because of his loving kindness. Yeah. It's, I'm, every day I give thanks. You know, I recognize that he is a person, he is a soul, but I also take responsibility for my life and my actions, my decisions. Yeah. And I give thanks every single day that I had asked, I want to learn about love through kindness, through ease, grace, and joy. And this soul appeared as my teacher of it, of it. And whether we're together for two years or 20 years, yeah. every day the lesson is invaluable. Yeah. I, and I'd also like you to think, if you would, so that we can talk about what what is he receiving from you mm. that is impacting his life and his perspective of, uh, of life and love and safety. <laughs> We'll have, I think we have a lot of topics going forward. We do, we do. We I've been keeping track. I've been writing them down. <laughs> have you? Good, good. We've had a lot of time apart, which we haven't liked, but we've learned a lot in our own lives in those period, in that period of time. And we grew we're, up. <laughs> we're, we're talking about it. <laughs> we will, in the meantime, have a wonderful two weeks. We'll get back into our regular cadence and confirm times. But keep healing, keep loving, and keep being kind. We will, and it's the same for you. And and may you find in your life that perfect fillet. <laughs> I know where to get it. <laughs> and, and, and me, the perfect pot pie. Pot pie. I can, I, can make, I can make it myself. I'm just a little pissed that they said <laughs> it was on sale and it wasn't. <laughs> I bet you know a restaurant that has a really good one. Yeah. Ray will you might have to order it. Ray will say, I like yours better. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of right, love to you and Ray, and we'll speak soon. Great to see you. I love you. Lots of love. Bye. Bye-bye.